Hello everyone, my name is Simran and I am going to teach you science. Alright students, in the last class we have discussed about threshing, winnowing, saving and, and hand picking. Okay, so today we will be discussing about some more separation methods. Alright students, when you want to make rice or pulses at your home, firstly what you do? You just have that particular rice or pulses in a container and then put some water in it. Okay, and when you put some water in it, the rice or pulses just settle down okay because they are heavy okay and what happens the lighter or very small dust particles just float on the water okay and then what you do you just drain them well the water and the like very thin dust particles you just drain them off and just take the clean and clear rice or pulses in the pressure cooker and you make that particular dish all right students in this way you are separating rice or pulses with or from that small and minute what dust particles and waste products all right students so this is the basis of the next method that we are going to discuss the method is sedimentation and decantation what do you mean by sedimentation and decantation let's assume an example you have a glass of water students and what you do in that particular glass of water you are putting two to three spoons of sand in it all right students and when you have put the spoons of sand in it you just let it stand for a few minutes say 20 minutes or 15 minutes okay let it stand for a few minutes what will happen you'll see that the sand has settled down completely all right students and the water is forming the uppermost layer of the glass okay so the process in which the sand and water are separated from each other is called sedimentation all right students so have a look when the heavier component in a mixture settles after water is added to it the process is called sedimentation this is what i have told to you right the sand is heavy and it is settling in the water and water is lighter so it will just remain at the above layer or upper layer of that particular mixture so this process in which water and sand are separated okay in the single layer in the form of different different layers are sedimentation this process is sedimentation okay and what is decantation now students is a very similar process in the process of decantation what happens you just pour out that particular upper layer of water okay and you just separate that water that is clean from the sand okay so sand and water are separated now with the help of the processes called sedimentation and decantation and what is decantation now when the water along with the dust is removed the process is called decantation okay so here is a picture of these processes students this is forming two different layers of the mixture okay and in this mixture you are just putting out the lighter components in the separate class and the heavy particles will stand separated in this particular mixture all right students so in this process of sedimentation and decantation you can clearly separate different different things all right students for example oil and water are separated from these two processes like sedimentation and decantation okay oil and water from their mixture can be separated by this process if the mixture of such liquids are allowed to stand for a few minutes then you will see that the oil is forming the upper layer of the mixture and water is at the lower layer of the mixture all right students so if a mixture of such liquids is allowed to stand for some time they form two separate layers okay so the components that form the topmost layer can be separated by the process of decantation all right students so this process is all about sedimentation and the decantation students the next process that we are going to discuss is related to this particular concept all right students how we have discussed that we have just separated the water from the sand from the process of decantation right but students what happened is that the water is not that clear there will be some some very less amount of sand particles present in it now by what method you can separate that particular sand particles from water you will be using the filtration process okay students the so next process is filtration in the process of filtration students you will need a filter paper what is a filter paper it is like a paper form that are of very thin pores all right students like this okay it is then folded in the form of a cone 
like this folded in the form of a cone this process this process and finally fold it like this all right students and when it is folded like this it is fixed in the funnel funnel is a instrument which looks like this okay the filter fil filter paper is fixed in the form of this cone in the funnel all right students and then what you do you just allow to that particular mixy like the mixture of water and sand into this funnel covered with the filter paper okay then what will happen clean and clear water will be coming out of this particular flask okay that funnel in the particular beaker and the sand particles the very thin and less amount of sand particles will stick on the filter paper all right students so the method of separation with the help of filter paper is called filtration all right students so you can have a look a filter paper folded in the form of a cone is fixed onto the funnel the mixture is then poured on the filter paper we have discussed it the mixture is allowed to pour on the filter paper all right students the solid particles in the mixture do not pass through it and will remain stick into that particular filter paper all right and remain on the filter and the rest of the clear clean water will be coming to this particular beaker all right students so this was all about filtration process all right students next we are going to discuss a very important process called evaporation what is evaporation students evaporation is a process in which you get water converted into vapors okay in the presence of sunlight or some heating process all right students so evaporation the process of conversion of water into its vapors is called evaporation all right students so for example you have a like water some some water you have some sand in it then you are pouring heating it up all right students what happen is that water will get into vapors but water will get converted into vapor and it will vaporize okay and you will be having sand left into that beaker all right students what do you see in this picture this is a very interesting picture you get salt from sea water okay we get salt from sea water but what by what process by process of evaporation students we form such kind of heaps or storing bags in the like in the beaches or on the banks of the seas okay what happens that is that the water will go to that particular container or what the formation that we have done all right students and it will evaporize okay it will evaporate the water will be converted into vapors and it will just vaporize in the atmosphere because sunlight is there very heat is there all right students and what happens is that salt will get deposited over here these structures all right students and it will form a heap and in this process you can obtain the salt from these particular heaps all right students so we get salt from the process of evaporation all right students so now we'll discuss the next process called condensation what is condensation students condition condensation is the process students in which in which the vapors are converted into liquid all right students so condensation is the process of conversion of water vapors into its liquid form that is condensation all right students you can have a look at the picture from this a steam steam is coming and steam is in the form of vapors okay steam is in the form of vapors and when you are allowing that particular plate over like this tilted like this what will happen the vapors will convert it into liquid form so the process in which the vapors are converted into the liquid form are is what condensation the process is called condensation all right students so this is all about condensation so we have discussed some separation methods today all right students now we'll discuss an important thing that is saturated solution what is a saturated solution students we know this thing very clearly that sa that salt gets dissolved in water okay you have a glass of water then you just pour one spoon of salt into it stir it well it will get dissolved then you'll put another spoon of salt into the water stir it well and it will also get dissolved into the water okay then you'll put 
third spoon of salt and then you will put it into into the glass of water stir it well and you'll see it will also get dissolved in water but students you are going to do this particular thing again and again and again what will happen there will be a point coming when no more salt will be dissolved in the water all, all right students so the point or the solution that is now in which no more substance can be dissolved into that solution is called saturated solution all right students so what is saturated solution saturated solution is the solution in which no more of the substance can be dissolved in the solution all right students saturated solution a saturated solution is one in which no more of that substance can be dissolved further all right students very simple okay you can also have the example of sugar into the water there is a glass of water and you are putting some spoons of sugar into it mixing it well it is getting dissolved there the there then there will be a point coming when no more sugar can be dissolved into the water all right students so the point or the solution in which now no more sugar can be dissolved is called saturated solution all right students so today we have discussed about some important separation methods like sedimentation decantation filtration evaporation condensation and a very important solution called saturated solution all right students so this was the very basic and the details of our chapter so today we have done the concept of chapter number 5 in the next class students will be doing the questions and answer portion of this particular chapter all right students i hope that you will discuss and study this chapter at your home do study hard okay we'll be meeting in the next class when we are doing question answers okay bye bye have a nice day